Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we've got Battlefield 1 Information Overload. You're seeing a new sneak peek trailer here showing off a few new things that we can get into in just a second. They've also added more information to the Battlefield 1 website, getting into weapons and weapon customization. Now specifically, there's a little bit here that says, we definitely want to allow you to customize your weapons in Battlefield 1, but we also heard your feedback that we should try to find a way to do this without adding hundreds of additional attachments. That's why Battlefield 1 utilizes preset loadouts for each weapon. You're still able to customize your weapons to make sure they work with your playstyle, but in a more focused way. Each weapon has up to three presets. Maybe you want a shotgun that packs a little more punch, or maybe you'd rather one that trades stability for accuracy. The different weapon presets should help you out. Some have up to three, giving you different ways to play with the same weapons. You're able to customize them as well, changing the zoom levels, reticles, and more. And whether DICE intentionally decided to do this or not, they've already shown us what two of these different customizations might be with the new sneak peek trailer. This gun that we're able to see in the first person view here that looks absolutely gorgeous is one that we've already seen in the previous trailer, but it doesn't look the same. This is the MG-08, but without its water jacket. In my complete trailer breakdown, I was able to identify this gun here as the MG-08, but based on its water jacket, and someone else was actually able to identify the gun that this guy is holding as the MG-08 as well, but we never saw it without the water jacket. So it's safe to assume that we're looking at two different configurations of the same weapon, which is really cool and I can't wait to see how they differ. We can assume that maybe an MG-08 with the water jacket would be more accurate, have more stable recoil control, maybe one will even come with a bipod for shooting more accurately, and then an MG-08 without the water jacket would overheat quicker if there's an overheat mechanic in the game, but it would probably also recoil coil more intensely, but maybe allow the player to move quicker and have better hip fire stability or something like that. So I think we can already get a pretty good concept of where they're going with the game. And I really like this approach because it means that players can't unintentionally make their weapons worse, which is something that happens a lot in Battlefield 4 because the attachment system is so complex and convoluted. The website also gives us a lot of other really cool information. Apparently there's going to be a lot of amazing weapon skins, which I can't wait for. I have a feeling it's not going to be the standard sort of Battlefield 4 camo, but maybe some more personalized or customized stuff. Guns are also going to have faster bullet velocity. I don't know if this means they're going to make it faster than real life, but Battlefield 4 actually has slower than realistic muzzle velocity. A lot of weapons shoot at one half or two thirds the speed of the real life counterparts. They also mentioned how the audio in the game is great and they've added in even more audio cues that haven't been there in previous games, like the sound of your weapon is gonna change as your magazine uh, gets lower on ammo. So you're gonna have audio cues to tell you when you might need to reload soon, which is extremely cool. I'm looking forward to that mechanic. And in case you weren't aware of what the weapon classes in the game were, there's gonna be six different classes, shotguns, SMGs, LMGs, semi-auto rifles, sidearms, and sniper rifles, AKA bolt action rifles. The weapon Weapons are also going to be more specialized, meaning you're going to have to use them in the situations they were intended for, for them to be most effective. Whereas in Battlefield 4, you can take an assault rifle, a machine gun, even a PDW or a, a carbine, and use them all respectively in the same engagement distances. So it might be a little bit more restrictive or a little bit more specialized. They also mentioned how snipers are going to be more about engaging people at the right range. So you don't want to be too far away and you don't want to be too close. So I imagine the damage model on those is going to be quite interesting. We also know a little bit more about the grenades that are going to be in the game. There's going to be the standard frag grenade. That should be no surprise. But then we're also getting a mustard gas grenade. That'll be the, the yellow smoke that you see in the trailer. Um, it's not going to do a huge amount of damage according to what they say, but it's going to last longer. So it can be used to obstruct areas for both movement and vision for a prolonged period of time. And then they're also going to have incendiary grenades, which will do a lot more damage um, and also obstruct areas for movement, but just for a shorter period of time. Once again, they've also emphasized the focus on melee weapons in the game. Since people got into trench warfare much closer in this war than other wars, uh, there's going to be a big variety of melee weapons that attack at different speeds, have different attack ranges, uh, different damage. Obviously, the bayonet will have some sort of bayonet charge mechanic to it to close the distance quickly. Um, so that'll be a very interesting 
part of the game now. Um, I'm very curious to see how it works out. We're gonna be playing a little bit of Battlefield Chivalry here. Now, along with the little sneak peek trailer, we've also got all this cool concept art, and there's actually some new information in this concept art, whether or not you wanna take it as this stuff will definitely be in the game, or it's just sort of conceptualizing what might be in the game. There is some pretty cool stuff here to look at and think about. This image here further confirms that the A7V Sturm Panzer Wagon will be in the game. It's a big boxy tank and should be able to fit a full squad of infantry. This image here shows a pilot bailing out of an airplane going down with a parachute. So there will most likely be parachutes in the game. I can't imagine they won't be in the game. Whether or not they're available to all classes has yet to be determined. Also, it's worth noting that DICE intended to have you change your class when you got into a vehicle or something like that. So this pilot class or this class with a parachute could be something that you only get if you spawn into an airplane. This next image here is one of the coolest concept pieces that I think I've seen so far. There's a lot of information here. The first and most important is the fact that there's a guy hanging in a basket in the middle of the air with a gun. This guy is actually in basically a World War I balloon that they use for scouting and reconnaissance, but could also be used for anti-air as they would attach cables to them so that it would clip off plane wings if they flew too close to the balloons. And they were in fact incredibly effective. Most of the top ace fighter pilots of World War I simply refused to attack balloons because they were far too dangerous. And aside from the massive airship in the background, we also see two new planes. In the foreground, I have what I believe is the Hanover CL-3A. The uh, tail doesn't seem like it's illustrated properly, but everything else on this plane looks to really replicate the Hanover design details. And then uh, in the background, we have the Fokker D7. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a huge focus on the variety of aircraft in this video game, since there was so much progression with aerial combat combat in World War One in so many different types of planes. This next concept art shows something extremely cool that I hope is in the game. Uh, imagine playing this map in multiplayer, a Zeppelin attacking London. Uh, an aerial battle without question will ensue on this map, but also what's going on on the ground level. It could just be an aerial only map because I don't think this actual attack in real life had a ground force involved. So it would be very cool to see if there are air only maps. What about naval? We already know that there's gonna be battleships slash dreadnoughts in the game, but look at these small boats attacking the much larger one here. I believe this is the Mass 15, which were small attack boats that had two torpedoes on either side. And in the war, they are actually credited with taking down battleships. Now we already determined that there was gonna be armored trains in the game from the initial teaser trailer, but we didn't know what they were pulling. Well, here you can see that one of them has an anti-air cannon on it, not to mention an artillery cannon. And then if you look in the background, you can see a massive army of horseback riders attacking. This is without question in the Ottoman Empire, and those are probably Bedouin warriors. Then we have an image of a soldier on top of a train firing back at a Halberstadt CL2 German fighter. If there's train versus plane warfare in this game, count me in. Again, we see a much more detailed example of the British Rolls-Royce armored car, and then we've got airplanes in the background. The desert maps in this game look absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait to check them out. Battlefield's always been known for having cool weapon emplacements. This here looks like a French artillery gun, the 75 millimeter field gun MLE. 1897, though it does look like there might be German troops operating it. Perhaps they captured it, or uh, it's just sort of a concept art snafu. Either way, it's a cool looking scene. I wasn't able to identify what kind of planes are in the background. They're just kind of small and not too well illustrated, so they could be just about anything. But uh, it looks like there's an armored column trying to move through the center of the map. Now, from my previous Battlefield 1 videos, we were able to determine that Gallipoli was almost certainly going to be at one of the battles in the game, whether it's single player or a multiplayer map, hopefully both, this image here pretty much confirms it. So uh, yeah, if you ever wanted to siege a castle in Battlefield, it looks like you might be able to do that. Holy crap. And speaking of castle sieges, this is probably a fortress in the Italian Alps. There is actually quite a few different mountain fortresses during World War I. And the fact that there's basically bunkers built into mountainsides that look kind of like castles. I mean, this game looks almost more fantasy than reality, but uh, extremely cool. And I hope this is a multiplayer map. 
Motorcycles with armored machine gun sidecars and flamethrowers, why not? Looks like we're gonna have some sort of motorcycle in the game if this concept art holds any truth to it. I believe this is actually a US Army Harley Davidson. And why not have truck and Jeep style combat? Looks like we might even have mounted machine guns on the back of a truck here. So as far as Battlefield Jeep concepts go, it seems like we're gonna have pretty much what we have in current Battlefield games. We also have quite a bit of new concept art showing off um, potentially some of the urban combat that will be in the game. It's not just going to be open fields and trenches. There's going to be cities in this game. And that's really exciting because it's going to be a place for Battlefield to show off whatever kind of destruction upgrades they've made to the game. And just the fact that urban combat has been a big part of Battlefield games for a long time. It's cool to finally see what some of that might look like. This here could easily be a French town showing off more destruction. Then we also have like what could be Italian villages here showing kind of fields and cobblestone walls. Here's a bird's eye view from the airship or Zeppelin in the game. I'm very excited to see how these play a role in the game. Will you be able to spawn in them and parachute into the trenches or onto the battlefield? Um, will they have good anti-air defenses? Are they going to be shot down in a huge spectacular fireball that obstructs the battlefield for a while? I mean, there's a lot that could be done here. We can also make out a couple new types of aircrafts in some of the concepts here. This is the Sopwith one half strutter, also known as the Sopwith type 9400. It's basically a two-seater Sopwith Camel. We also have this cool concept here showing a foreground plane. It's another two-seater. This is the Royal Aircraft Factory RE8. There's a lot of two-seater aircraft in this game, and some of them have only made an appearance in the concept art, but it would be very cool if there is a huge variety of aircraft. Now the one to the left I was a bit confused by because I couldn't find any biplanes with that same wing configuration and the same front end there, but I think it's actually a Fokker DR1 with the top wing shot completely off. So that would be very cool if this is another element to the dynamic vehicle destruction. And the last little rendering here shows us a cool desert combat scene with horseback versus a combat motorcycle. Now there's a ton of new information here. If you guys noticed any sort of weapons or vehicles that I might have missed, please let me know in the comments section and I'll actually be updating the video description with a complete list of vehicles and weaponry that we've discovered in the game entirely so far. So from the original trailer breakdown and from this new information as well. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.